Respected dignitaries and participants who have joined us for today's international webinar, I, on behalf of organizers, Dr. Pankaj Kakade, uh, on behalf of organizers, welcome you all. Uh, dear participants, uh, the ongoing ongoing pandemic has exerted tremendous influence on the society in all regards that we know. It has altogether changed our perspective of looking at many things in our life. And education is, of course, not an exception to that. It has compelled us to review our actions and mold them to suit the present set of circumstances. This impact of the pandemic is also clearly visible in education. The way education in general and higher education in particular was imparted traditionally has seen a sea change during the pandemic and as stakeholders had to cope up with these changes. This change has created several challenges and opportunities for us. This webinar is an attempt to address these challenges and opportunities by providing a platform to share experiences, opinions, and expertise on this subject. I once again welcome you all to this international webinar. Let me first of all introduce you to our panelists for this inaugural session. So we have with us uh, Dr. Smita Vanzari, treasurer of Amar Seva Mandal and a Senate member of uh, Nagpur University who will be presiding over this inaugural function. Uh, if she has not joined, she will be joining us in a few more moments. We also have with us uh, Dr. Shinimas Varkedi as the chief guest of this inaugural session, who is uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Central Sanskrit University, New Delhi. We have with us Dr. Glenn Martin, President of World Constitution and Parliament Association and a professor at Radford University who will be delivering a keynote address in this inaugural session for today's international webinar. We also have with us Dr. Anjali Astar, who is co-convener of this international webinar, who is principal of Shantaram Purduke College of Law. We also have Dr. Snehal Pandavis, uh, principal of uh, GW Govindrao uh, Vanzari Law College in Nagpur, and she is also a co-convener for uh, today's international webinar. I welcome all the panelists for this inaugural session. And now it's time to listen to the introductory, introductory remarks of today's international webinar uh, by Dr. Anjali Hastak, madam. Dr. Anjali Hastak is the principal of Shantaram Purduke College of Law since last 14 years. Uh, she also has been a dean of a law faculty in both Nagpur University as well as Gondwana University, Gadchiroli. Her special area of research interest is property rights of Hindu women and has uh, published extensive research work on this subject. I request uh, Dr. Hastak to please uh, deliver introductory remarks for today's international webinar. Yeah, yeah, please sorry. Please. Um, Shantara Kodke College Law, governed by Sarvode Shikshan Mandar Chandrapur, and Govindra Vansari Law College, governed by Amar Seva Mandal Nagpur, joined through their internal assurance, quality assurance cell, have organized one day international webinar entitled Impact of COVID Challenges. With the blessings of our patron, Srimati Sudhatai Shantaramji Pordu, Vansari Secretary of Nagpur, who is also a member of Legislative Council. The president of this inaugural session, Amar Singh, Senate uh, member of Professor Srivas Varkhedi, Honorable Vice Chancellor, St. University, New Delhi, who is also going to inaugurate this webinar. Dr. Glenn T. Martin, keynote speaker of this webinar, who is paint of World Constitution and Parliament Association, New York, United States of America. On the and all participants, international webinar, 
Dr. Anjali has talked Chandra and principal of Govindra Vanzari College of Law, Nagpur. On behalf of esteemed member management staff, the novel coronavirus outbreak originated at Wuhan in China and got spread across other countries rapidly, causing severe acute respiratory syndrome resulting in large number of deaths. It is presenting challenge to public health and the world or The pandemic has devastated millions of people causing economic uh, and social disruption and existential threat. Due to lo lockdowns globally, rise has arisen of losing livelihood. Governments of the nation uh, are taking we are all experiencing COVID Delta Plus and now today Omicron and we are attacked by we the people are the people from the field of higher education on global so broad challenges to the higher education community. The higher education institutions and crores of students have been added by various restrictions. Many countries came out with uh, alternate solutions. Uh, from offline mode, we have changed to online mode. And during this tough time, we know uh, that we must appreciate the readiness of students' accessibility. Motivation is playing an important role. Today, universities are examinations also, but many students are not able due to unavailability facilities of computers, mobile phone, mental tension in many students. Education institutions are facing various challenges due to COVID-19 pandemic. So friends, today in this international webinar, on a, which is on a virtual platform, all are assembled here to think and discuss about our strengths, which definitely opportunities which we see to achieve and challenges uh, which we definitely can conquer are there. And we need to remain prepared uh, for, for future. So for this purpose, we in this international webinar are going to discuss about uh, various issues related to impact of ongoing pandemic on higher education by reflecting on new paradigms, that is various standards, new, new perspectives, and definitely the challenges. Uh, in the inaugural session, we are blessed with the presence of Professor Srinivas Varkhedi, Vice Chancellor of prestigious Central Sanskrit University, New Delhi, to inaugurate this international webinar. I take this opportunity to congratulate Professor Varkhedi, sir, for being appointed as Vice Chancellor of Central Sanskrit University, New Delhi, and thank him for taking time out uh, out of his busy schedule to be to uh, to be with us now uh, friends i wish to inform all the participants that our earlier invited international based resource persons are not able to attend this webinar due to their personal difficulties but we are very fortunate to have dr glenn t martin from new york united states of america who is a professor of philosophy at Radford University in Virginia. Uh, and he's also chairperson of Radford University program in peace studies. As a world citizen, he has worked in, in the service of world peace with justice for many years, traveling and lecturing worldwide and uh, authoring many books and articles on behalf of a holistic and transformed global paradigm uh, and uh, world system. He is also president of the World Constitution and Parliament uh, Association. I am thankful to Dr. Ushashi Guha, uh, who was the former principal of Central uh, India College of Education, uh, who was instrumental in inviting uh, Dr. Glenn and also his participation in this uh, seminar. Uh, at the inauguration function, I also wish to let you know about the other participants who are going to be there in this seminar. Dr. A. Satyanarayana Raju, who is the former professor 
of uh, commercial law school of law of Diril Dawa University, Federal Democratic Republic uh, of Eth Ethiopia. I am thankful to Professor Krishna Badade and uh, Professor Tambe uh, from Shankar Rao Chavan College of Law uh, of Pune for introducing Dr. Raju to us. We are also going to have uh, Advocate Firdos Mirza, who is Advocate uh, of uh, High Court of Bombay. Uh, then uh, Advocate Nuzat Parveen Khan, who is Dean of Bennett University uh, of no Noida. Uh, then uh, in valedictory session, we are going to have Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Prashant Bokare as guest of honor and Dr. Kirtivardhan Dikshit, who is, all, who is also the former Vice Chancellor of Gondwana University as a president of valedictory session. In inaugural uh, session, we are going to have uh, uh, Dr. Smita Vanzari as president, uh, who is the treasurer of uh, Amar Seva uh, Mandal and also the Senate member of RTM Nagpur University. So friends, once again, I welcome you all uh, in this international uh, seminar and discussing uh, about various issues related to pandemic COVID-19 and uh, new challenges related to higher education. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mrs. Sanjil Estakadam, for giving us a backdrop of this whole international webinar. So why we are organizing this international webinar, you have explained us to uh, us to and to the participants very well. Uh, she has also given us an idea about what will be the course of uh, the whole international webinar and how the sessions will go and the resource persons who will be speaking to all of you in this international webinar. So once again, uh, I express my sincere thanks to Dr. Anjal Yastak, Madam, for uh, giving her introductory remarks. Uh, now it's time to listen from our chief guest and uh, inaugurator of uh, today's international webinar, uh, Dr. Shinivas Varkhedi, sir. Uh, Dr. Shinivas Varkhedi, uh, as of now, he is uh, Vice Chancellor of Central Sanskrit University, New Delhi. Before this, he has worked as a Vice Chancellor of Kalidas Sanskrit University, Rante, and also has been acting Vice Chancellor of Munwana University and Karnataka Sanskrit University. Uh, he has to his credit several publications in the subject of computational linguistic, Sanskrit literature and Darshan Shastra. His expertise uh, is on the subject of Nyaya. We are very, uh, we are very pleased sir that you are uh, with us to deliver this inaugural address. Uh, it, uh, we, we, we feel ourselves very lucky and that you are with us and uh, you will definitely add a great uh, value, immense value to the proceedings of today's seminar. So I request uh, Dr. Srinivas Varkidi, sir, to please uh, give his inaugural speech. Uh, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, one and all. I'm happy to be part of this uh, international webinar on impact of ongoing pandemic on higher education, new paradigms and challenges organized by Sri Shantaram Punduke College of Law, Chandrapur, and in association with uh, Govindra Vanjari College of Law, Nagpur. Uh, uh, respected chairperson of the program, Dr. Smita Vanjari, and uh, Conveners of the program, Dr. Anjali Hastak, Principal, Shantaram Bhuntike College of Law, Chandrapur, and Dr. Snehal Padnavis, Principal, Govindra Vanjari College of Law, Nagpur, and also today's keynote, keynote speaker, Dr. Martin, uh, and uh, my dear friends and colleagues of law colleges. Uh, it's an interesting but ongoing topic that we are discussing today and we have been discussing on in all these days. We know the impact of pandemic situation on higher education. Even when uh, the third wave of corona attacked the nation, the first and foremost area that has been affected is 
education and we are impacted we are we are affected we are badly affected and today as uh, one of the stakeholders of education system i feel very bad to face this situation because of two reasons one what will happen what will happen to my uh, young uh, generation who is really struggling a lot to receive good education in these last two years and of course we are awarding degrees without any practical knowledge and on the, on, on the other hand uh, a very 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 uh, big so learning gap is huge the new admissions are happening and we can see lot of learning gaps we, we, are, we are unable to really in in part any education uh due to these gaps this is true with the simple classroom of high school to the higher education so what are the solutions one is the solution should be found inside and the other one is outside the impact is huge i don't know whether uh, the parents are equally uh, i mean whether they are they are equally pained uh students go with degree certificates whether they are employable in the market and whether they are capable to continue their higher education these are they are really 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 these are very sensitive questions that we are facing now but on the other hand uh thanks to corona thanks to covid situation because when we thought in india to change our uh, education system for last 20 30 70 years we practiced one sort of education system uh, where uh, the impact of colonialism uh, you know the uh, the british education system continued on our education system today first time we thought that we should have our own national new education policy in the dawn of new education policy national education policy 2020 we uh, faced this uh, covid situation you know any education policy if you want to implement uh, in order to implement new education policy you have to deconstruct uh, the previous uh, huge educational constructions so to deconstruct the previous system we need to put a lot of efforts fortunately corona has made this problem very easy you know due to corona we our former education system got collapsed nothing is left out the people previous who were trained in previous education system got to know that this is no more useful and therefore people are ready to welcome new education system so now situation corona has uh, made it very easy to demolish the previous education system so that we can construct on plane we can construct new education system on plane where new education policy has advised us a future uh, you know futuristic education system uh, in order to bring futuristic education system we have found out and we have really really got rid of the big baggage of previous education system so so that i should we should thank corona we should thank our covid situation now we are in new age what is this new age people sometimes think only online is new age only using ict is new age no ict was in existence in existence even previous uh you know last two decades we are using uh, ict effectively but we never ever thought of uh 
you know using ict uh in the in the in the classrooms in the education system we never ever thought of uh giving instructions through online mode we had we had online systems but we, we never tried to use them in our um, you know day to day life we are pushed i definitely today i am speaking from delhi and sitting in my car somewhere in andhra on, on on my road and uh, which is possible uh, because of this online uh, mode otherwise i would not have dreamt of speaking to you today at this moment and you know, all sitting in delhi so really really we appreciate you know this is not the strength of online mode online mode was existing before this but this is the strength of change of mindset we changed our mindset we broke our mindset we are ready to use it now so uh, today i appreciate the uh, the colleges who have embraced this new model of uh, new mode of um, you know communication but is it enough so is it enough that we are able to communicate therefore we are good in education uh you know now courts are online courts are happening online legal educations are online discussions are happening online transactions are happening uh somewhere we are uh, somewhere being an educationist i feel that uh, we are really good in transaction and of course transaction is equally happening very well without any human interventions but whether value of education is transformed uh, or transferred the value of education is not just limited to the transactions you know, in transaction of information you can do the, that you can do that cannot be transmitted through online for example see i can show you uh, how to prepare a dish online but i cannot make you taste it i cannot make you smell it there are limitations so i can prepare i can show you pre- how to prepare a, a, a dish but uh, there is, there are limitations so similarly some education does not have only value up to the transactions it has more than that so those values are transmitted only in person communications and coexistence coexistence of the students coexistence of the teachers this is what in in our ancient indian tradition this is what called gurukulam i mean gurukulam means people used to be together and get information not only information they used to communicate they used to share they used to uh, you know learn from each other so this learning uh, essence of learning uh, has i think has been lost in this uh, mode of communication so somewhere we have to uh, you know we have to uh, uh, somewhere we have to negotiate we cannot say that everything is online we cannot say that everything is offline both we should so therefore sometimes i think when i you know create a new age of colleges or new um, uh, you know uh, place of learning so we should have two set of uh, learning spaces one space is online space it's a learning sky you know i can sit anywhere and i can sit i can learn from uh, professor anjali hastak that's quite possible she can give instructions to me she can deliver and she can transform but she cannot transform my my personality so to do that i have to be in touch with her wherever she is that is her personality will impact me for that we should have any you know what do what i call is um, experiential learning that experiential learning is possible only in the very beautiful campuses so for campuses of the colleges or universities will give an experiential learning for that people should come and learn but otherwise people can enjoy their space and learning space and sky they can enjoy, they can learn so in this way the new education policy expects you now today just now i had uh, meetings with couple of uh, government officers who are pushing uh, the new education policy is to be implemented in the universities uh, so 
optimum utilization of current uh, resources and then and then expand it so now if uh, professor anjali hastak is a great teacher of law she should be available to everyone why she is limited to her colleges uh, her uh, for, for uh, therefore my humble request to all the teacher is just break the walls break the walls break the classrooms and come out and uh, bring your best of yours to the world this is the essence of this new world uh, you know uh, education system therefore we have challenges but at the same time we have opportunities with these words i congratulate and i appreciate the efforts taken by law college and out of law though i am i went out of uh, your area area and chandrapur i left a couple of one, one month back and now i left even vidarbha to delhi uh, but you have uh, showed uh, you know tremendous uh, love and affection to me uh, by inviting me for this program i i am really indebted indebted to you and uh, i really 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 uh, you know this is memorial time for me to spend some moments with me with you thank you very much thank you thank you so much uh, dr varkadi sir uh, being a vice chancellor of the university and teacher at heart uh, you have been watching uh, the challenges and the opportunities that covid has created for all as a stakeholders from very close quarters uh, thank you for sharing your expertise thank you for sharing your opinions on what you have on what uh, your thinking is on how covid has impacted the higher education uh, definitely uh, what you said is very true that we have seen teachers uh, neglecting the important significance of using ict in the classrooms uh, for a long time but as soon as covid came we we we, we uh, we can see that now teachers are uh, teachers have uh, no hesitation or no reason to you know from uh, no reason to excuse themselves from using you know, the technology uh, for uh, imparting the curriculum so whatever you have shared and what advice piece of advice you have given for the teachers and definitely the teachers will follow that advice i am sure uh, thank you so much now it's time to go to the keynote address for today's inaugural session so we have with us uh, dr glen martin who will be delivering a keynote address let me first of all introduce uh, dr glen martin uh, to all the participants dr glen martin is a president of world constitutions and parliamentary associations united states of america he is also a president of institute of world problems he is a professor of philosophy and peace studies at radford university virginia state united states of america he has tremendous liking in the issues of international peace and has significant contributions in this area in different capacities he has published several books and papers on variety of topics in comparative philosophy spirituality of human liberation economic democracy and democratic world government he is also recipient of several international awards for his work that he has done towards world peace so we have with us a very well known uh, international personality who has contributed very significantly in the field of education uh, and as well as world peace so i now request uh, dr glen martin to please deliver keynote address for today's international day thank you panjas for that kind introduction and i very want to say i very much appreciate uh the work all of you are do doing and uh, to being part of this seminar that is graced by principals and deans and vice chancellors uh, uh of the educational institutions in india uh <clears throat> i've visited in my course of my career many of these educational institutions and it's uh, it's wonderful to see the commitment uh of the people of the leaders of india the educational managers and thinkers of india to the educational process uh i think the important question to address in response to the issue of how has the pandemic changed higher education is to ask another question 
<clears throat> what is education? What is the meaning and purpose of education? I will consider this issue briefly below, but perhaps the first thing to consider is how has the pandemic changed the means and methods of education in a number of ways through accelerating the digital revolution? Our first speaker uh, emphasized that, and I think it's important to emphasize this as well. The digital revolution appears to be inevitable. Humanity has gone online. Online conferences, online classes, online meetings of teachers and administrators. The landscape of higher education is being transformed by the digital revolution. Libraries are now full of computer terminals and classrooms are filling up with students in front of those terminals. Classrooms and libraries are also in the process of disappearing as brick and mortar establishments where people gather for educational purposes. If the physical presence of universities and colleges to continue very far into the future, it may be that the purposes for which these are used will have to be creatively transformed. The digital revolution accelerated by the pandemic provides opportunities, but well, as well as dangers. One big danger is that the immense amount of information going online has no clear vetting process. When the bulk of thought and information was found in books, there was at least some restriction on false or misleading information. Publishers wanted to be respected for quality. They served as gatekeepers. Mostly, most of them would not publish the common trash of every Tom, Dick, and Harry who has some uh, crazy idea. But now that is all gone. Online, everything can be posted. This places a big responsibility on teachers. Teachers must include in their curriculum advice and wisdom about how to be a critical reader online, how to vet, fact check, and discern the legitimate and the illegitimate sources. But how does post-pandemic higher education relate to the purpose of education in general? We know that a major aspect of education is the transmission of knowledge from sources to recipients. Sources of knowledge can be books, websites, social media, personal experiences, or living human beings. The recipients are students who assimilate knowledge from a wide variety of sources and in the service of a wide variety of careers and purposes and work settings. For this very reason, it may be very difficult to generalize in any meaningful ways about the meaning and purpose of education. Uh, students are there for a multiplicity of reasons, many of them just practical and concrete reasons. However, teachers and educators have often had a feeling that their enterprise was very important. I think everybody in this seminar has that feeling. Uh, education is just not another job for us. Uh, I will try to explore this briefly below. But before that, let me just ex mention some levels in the educational process. Techniques for doing things must be transmitted as well as the content of things that need to be done. In the study of law, for example, the proper ways to file a brief or to create a document or to address a court must be learned, but also the content of the law that is being administered by these techniques. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hence, these two fundamental dimensions of education are techniques and content. If one studies nursing, one has learned the techniques of medical record keeping, giving injections, applying bandages, administering medications, and so on. But one must also study the content of physiology, chemistry, and biology of the human body. However, the online situation forced by the pandemic interferes with the completion of this educational process. How are the students to learn these techniques without face-to-face -face interaction and practical experience? How can we provide a complete education online? Technique and content, uh, beyond that technique and content, there's a larger framework. There appears to be a moral and philosophical dimensions of the activity. 
The philosophy of law studies the meaning and purpose of law. What is law? Why is it important? What are its ethical purposes and justifications? What are the moral dimensions of all aspects of lawmaking and practice? The philosophy of health healthcare that embraces nursing studies the meaning and purpose of healthcare and nursing. Why is it? There may lie another more fundamental question of the meaning of the human project itself in relation to the cosmos and or the divine ground of the cosmos. What does it mean to be a human being? Who are we? And what are the purposes of, of living and, and being part of civilization? These questions are huge and controversial, and yet many of us feel they lie in the background of our educational vocation and lend meaning and significance to our teaching and educational activities. We all know that the English word education comes from a Latin root, educio, which means to lead out. A teacher is not just trying to put something into the student, but at the same time to lead something out. Some inherent meaning and possibility that has to do with actualizing his or her potential as a human being. What does it mean to be a human being? Even if we are not physically, uh, philosophically clear on this question, we feel that we can distinguish between human beings who have more fully actualized their potential and those who have not. Education must show the students how to use the many resources now available to them for creatively actualizing their life potential, their mental, emotional, cognitive, moral growth and development. All traditional religious traditions have included spiritual teachers, wise persons said to serve as guides for students to actualize a dimension or quality that is within us all, that has to do with what it means to be a human being. As educators, many of us are on a quest to actualize ourselves as fully as possible within this dimension. We actualize ourselves and at the same time, attempt to say something to our students often between the lines or implicit in the background. It is in this respect that I think the presence of the teacher in the classroom has been a great advantage and that the movement of classrooms online creates a disadvantage. The teacher needs to be an exemplary and living embodiment of this self-actualization process that is in one way or another behind all education. The living, interacting presence of the teacher can have an impact on students as part of a physical community of teacher and students that is far beyond the techniques or the specific content of the material being studied. How many of us remember extraordinary teachers who influence us, not because of the content of their classes, because of, but of, because of who they were as human beings? It is here that I think that the post-pandemic digital revolution has posed a major challenge to higher education. In online classes, even those that allow in-person online, encounter, online encounters, the dimension of the living presence of the teacher appears somewhat reduced or diminished. The personal person-to-person -person communication of the unspoken depths behind the educational project can come through the living presence of teachers appears diminished online. The personal relationships that need to be addressed, uh, again, are diminished online. The physical presence of students on campuses that the pandemic has disrupted and that fosters a sense of community uh, uh, has, has diminished and this limits the living impact of teachers. But the pandemic has created another global phenomenon that needs to be considered as well. It has brought our world closer together through people around the world having Zoom and online meetings, just like this one. But at the same time, it has revealed the stark realities of a world full of conflict, for a world full of national rivalries, selfishness, corruption, that cannot effectively work together to solve our most fundamental global problems, which the pandemic represents in immediate and graphic form. People in poor countries are largely on their own, 
Rich countries are buying vaccines, masks, ventilators, and other COVID-related products. And the world's medical system has broken down, even in wealthy countries, revealing a world in which our basic right to health care is structurally denied. And our rights to peace and a healthy planetary environment are structurally denied and ignored. Here's what one Italian commentator wrote early in the pandemic. He wrote, quote, the world, the whole world is a war. For the first time in history, it seems that everyone is against everyone without any alliances. Each nation thinks for itself. Every means to guarantee the winning weapons against the virus are there, masks, swabs, respirators, so the United States managed to buy in Brescia, Italy, half a million kits to detect the infection. They shipped them to Memphis in a military aircraft. In using these hours, in these hours, there are world auctions to buy every rising stock of masks and respirators at increasing prices, an economic challenge in which the strongest wins. Like in war, but now waged without any alliances, unquote. How will this realization impact higher education? Here is what I wrote in the preface to my latest book called The Earth Constitution Solution Designed for a Living Planet. I wrote, but after this current disaster, what will the world have moved on to? What will it move on to after the global pandemic and the global economic collapse of 20 and 2021? Will it be more of the same? More war preparations? More bioterror research? More chance of accidents that will create new pandemics? More exploitative international loans placing the poor of the world in debt to the rich? Will we return to co continuing collapse of the climate while the world spends its precious resources on war and militarism and weapons research? Will we return to more government and mass media lies and propaganda covering up the global culture of corruption and fragmentation? Isn't it clearly past time that the world begins to realize that we have no credible future at all? unless we unite as a global community under democratic world law directed toward the common good of everyone. It is clear everywhere that the pandemic has hurt by far the most those who are the have-nots of the world. This is true in India. It's true in the United States. Those who have little or nothing to fall back on when they lose their job or the immediate sources of income. The pandemic has made it clear how unjust and corrupt our world system is. And we as educators must bring to the educational process a positive, creative, and transformative spirit that allows students to see clearly how the world must be changed to create a decent home for all of its citizens. And how can this possibly happen unless we human beings unite economically, politically, and morally? Post-pandemic higher education can learn from these facts that the world needs to unite if we are to have a credible future at all. Education, after all, is about everybody. Educa every human being needs it. And we need to be united in the delivery of education for a transformed human condition. If the students are constitute a largely younger generation, they need to be thinking differently. We as educators need to be communicating and encouraging different thinking. They need to be thinking of overcoming the war system and the capitalist system and using our world under a just and equitable planetary system, a genuine constitution for the Federation of Earth. All people, especially young people, need to be thinking and acting like global citizens concerned with the common good of the whole in our plan common planetary future. In my view, these insights are behind everything we do and we must do in the post-pandemic era. The impact of the pandemic on higher education 
is a wake-up call. It's a may wake-up call that we as educators must be thinking and communicating differently. Thank you. Thank you all very much. It's been an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Martin, for your wonderful keynote address. It has clearly set a tone for the upcoming discussions in this uh, international seminar. Uh, you are very correct in saying that in classrooms, because of physical absence of teachers and uh, students, that connect which is required for understanding the philosophy of why rather than what is uh, somehow missing from the campuses. And that is very true. Your concern for world peace, your concern for humanity is very clearly evident in your address. And the solution that you have offered of getting a world constitution for uh, whole for, for the whole globe that will govern our actions. And you have uh, stated a very, very clear fact very bluntly, and that is very true, sir, that we are never going to come out of this pandemic unless we unite unless we unite under one constitution. So thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your wonderful keynote address. Uh, now uh, it's time to take certain questions if uh, our participants have certain queries to ask to our uh, keynote speaker. I request uh, Dr. Margavi Dumre if she has a set of questions for Dr. Martin. Good evening. We welcome all this international webinar. This webinar is very informative as it imparted a lot of knowledge to all the people. Sir, we have few questions with us. How far online mode is feasible in rural parts of India where there are problems of, of infrastructure and network? Yeah, that's a, a question for me. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I understand the problem in India, but I'm not, I'm not uh, really qualified to answer that kind of question. But I, uh, but I think that, uh, the, as I was saying, the digital revolution is here to stay, and it's moving worldwide. And you know, people in Africa, for example, in very poor countries. Uh, the first thing that they have and they must have, and it's made inexpensive for that reason, is the cell phone. People are walking around connected, even though they they don't have adequate food or health care or, or housing. And, uh, and uh, I think that, you know, human beings and governments must work to get everybody uh, as part of this online global community we it has great vast potential even though as i was saying in my paper it has limitations as well uh it, it is transforming our thinking we're all we're all realizing that we're on one planet we're talking to one another right now from halfway around the world and we need to see what's positive in this digital revolution and make it available to everyone and, and this and this cannot be done, I don't think, easily by the government of India, because it is tr like every single government in the world. It is trapped in a global financial system that restricts its capacity, that restricts the value of its currency, that restricts the its uh, political maneuverability, that forces us forces it to militarize and and uh, be in a, a uh, contested relationship to Pakistan and China and so on. You know, it's the world system that keeps us from actualizing our potential. This world system is destructive, as I was saying in my paper. Both capitalism and the system of sovereign militarized nation states is destructive of the potential, the potential of uh, the digital potential for uh, creating a true global community. So that that's my you know answer as far as I can give it uh, in terms of that kind of question. Thank you, sir. There is another question. 
is the online mode is be initiated as a regular mode or just as a temporary measure to meet the covid-19 situation well as i was saying it's it's got to be permanent it's uh, it, we uh, um you know the digital revolution is going to change everything it's going to change manufacturing right we, uh people people uh are be able, will be able to manufacture with a very small marginal cost so the the, the manufacturing systems that have huge physical infrastructures will be disappearing in many ways in many areas and so on uh and so jobs will be lost and we hear about this all the time you know what are pe what are people going to be doing if there's no more manufacturing jobs and, and the robots are doing all the manufacturing for us and the answer is we have to be thinking in terms of all of us right the people uh, everybody has to have a guaranteed annual income not because they're working at some job but because they're human beings and we have to convert the world from one of capitalist enterprise striving for private profit for the few at the expense of the many to a global community in which we 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 uh, arrange the economic and political system uh to benefit ourselves as a community as human beings all of us equally with relative economic equality and relative and freedom and pro relative political equality these you might say are hopeless ideals but now we're in a situation because of the collapsing climate and because of the threat of nuclear war that only increases we're in a situation that is forcing these transformative ideals upon us you know either we either we transform our world or we don't survive beyond the next century in my view right sir yeah. there is one last question if there are any attempt to evolve a uniform pattern of online education system throughout the country is there a uniform would you please repeat that if there are any attempt to evolve a uniform pattern of online education system throughout the country uh i don't think there's necessarily a, a has to be a uniform pattern because the digital revolution uh, opens us up to all kinds of possibilities in the classroom in the classroom here at my university, I just retired uh, last year from teaching, but but uh, uh, under the digital revolution, uh, I, I am not a tech expert, but I find that in the classroom, I'm able to bring in films, I'm able to draw, get on online on the uh, browser and bring in films and videos and uh in uh messages and discussions from all over the world there's tremendous resource tremendous possibilities and and uh and i think we need to learn all of us uh creatively learn how to use these in a in in terms of the particular circumstances of the kind of thing we're teaching the the subject matter we're teaching and so on the, what is uniform is the technology that makes this possible. But what is not uniform is the immense creative possibilities that the digital revolution gives to each of us. Thank you so much, sir. I'm remembering a few words. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promise to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Be it tough time or good time, we all have to have this journey and the journey we have to keep moving but we have to ensure that we keep moving towards the development towards the excellence and towards the almighty with these few words i am signing up thank you thank, thank you thank you so much madam once again i am sincerely thankful to dr ben martin that he has accepted our invitation to be part of this webinar and delivered such a wonderful keynote address. Uh, his idea and vision of creating a world under one constitution 
is a real solution that can be offered to pandemic like this the pandemic covid pandemic the pandemic like this health pandemics they will come and go but then uh, his piece of advice for all of us where he says that uh, we have to address the pandemics of poverty we have to address the pandemic of uh, world peace we have to address the pandemic of <coughs> climate change then and then only we will uh, overcome all the challenges that we are facing in our human journey thank you thank you so much once again sir now it's time to listen from uh, the president of today's inaugural session dr smita vanzari madam uh, dr smita vanzari is a treasurer of amar seva mandal nagpur and is involved in administration of several education institutes institutes she is also member of uh, senate of rtm nagpur university she is also a very active social worker and is is working in different social organizations for different social causes i now welcome dr smita vanzari to please deliver a presidential address of this inaugural session thank you kakade sir thank you am i audible yes ma'am yes yeah thank you uh on today's uh, conference of impact of ongoing pandemic on higher education and new pa paradigm and challenges organized by both the colleges sp college chandrapur and uh, goindra vanzari college uh, nagpur today uh, president of sarvodaya shikshan mandal chandrapur uh, sudatai podduke then secretary uh, shri prashant podduke then uh, honorable vice chancellor shrinivas varkeri sir central uh, sanskrit university new delhi then dr anjali hastak um, madam principal uh, sp college of law chandrapur and today's keynote speaker who was really wonderful today dr glenn martin sir uh, sir you are very wonderful your inputs were uh, very good and the points you were talking about is is very apt to this uh, conference this education is our hope for a better future as the nobel prize winner nelson mandela said education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world it is the best instrument for promoting human rights democracy reducing poverty and creating a mindful social evolution no human being can lead a dignified life and build its own identity without education in today's knowledge economic it is a new currency of economic competitiveness peace and prosperity we live in a era of globalization and technology which is significantly transforming all aspect of our lives however the education as the most remarkable technology invented by a man legs behind the modern technologies new invention emerge every day and instead of being a patron of these invention education remains static and molded on ideas of old approach a new paradigm in education is highly needed for addressing the rapid changes and pressing the challenges human face humanity face nowadays education should not be a part of problem but the positive changes it should not continue relying on the traditional model of teaching by simply memorizing the fact when every day smartphones provide direct access to a mountain of information economic impact of pandemic is manifested to mind to deep recession in developing the developed countries new business models and a new paradigm of conducting business in various industries are in imperative in the covid-19 period the cha these changes in conducting business affect smes and big corporations traditional employment structures and traditional business structure are modified it is uncontested the education system globally are under the constant pressure to respond to the changes need of society the outbreak of covid-19 has reminded us that the complexity of education need responsive practice to 
facilitate effective teaching and learning across all level of education globally. All over the world, the normative ways of teaching and learning evolved drastically in the first quarter of 2020 academic year, when teachers and students found online offerings to be the dominant op op options available as the consequences of pandemic. On these pandemic conditions, it is important to continuously address changes in various settings, industries, countries, and local communities in order to develop future strategies for pandemic-like situation, thus reducing its negative impact, measures taken by higher education institutions to support the provision of education to ensure learning continuation provide some educational leaders need to rethink content creation and content sharing and establish working communities to meet the demand of the new paradigm in education. I wish all the best to the international webinar on impact of ongoing pandemic on higher education and new paradigm and challenges. And thank you very much and happy learning to all. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Smita Madam, for your presidential address. Uh, thank you for being here with us and encouraging us for uh, organization of today's international webinar. Uh, I once again thank you all the panelists uh, who have uh, joined us in this inaugural session of international webinar that we have organized today. Uh, and now it's time to Participants move on the to the, our second technical session. Uh, sorry, first technical session, after the session. Now I hand over the controls to for the sake for this first technical session to Dr. Lina. Over to you, Lina. Challenges. In human life, education is the most significant tool to transform one's own life. It is the one of the basic right of all the human beings on this planet. To get good education in a proper manner is a very important for all of us. But in COVID-19 pandemic, uh, it affects the every aspect of the human life all over the world. So it is impacted on our social life, occupation, communication, financial resources, and health of every human being. And obviously, the education system is also the one of them. To enlighten uh, us on all these issues, today we have with us the resource personality in education field and keynote speaker of today's webinar, Professor Dr. Aluri Satyanarayana Raju. Uh, before his speech, let me introduce Dr. Raju, sir. Uh, Dr. Raju, sir, served as a professor of uh, commercial law in a Dire Dawa University, which is one of the most uh, uh, public universities in the Federal Democratic Rep Republic of Ethiopia. There was the former principal of a new law college, Ahmed Nagar, uh, in Maharashtra. His PhD thesis was adjured as a best PhD th uh, thesis entitled The Legal Framework of Arbitration and Cancellation in India, a Critical Study. Sir has awarded uh, Shri Peri Narayanam Murthy Memorial Gold Medal by the Andhra University. Sir has served in a various universities bodies as a member and board of the study in the Faculty of Law in Pune, Pune University. He is a member of the advisory board of the NSS in Pune University. Sir is the member of International Association of the Law Schools also. Now, again, I welcome you, sir, and bless us. Uh, uh, and now I request uh, you bless us in this evening with your kind Words. Over to you. Thank you for your generous introduction. At the outset, I am thankful and graciousness of the Chandrapur Law College for having invited me as a resource person in the first technical session. President Srimati Sudhatai, Secretary Prasant Podki. Sarvode Sikshan Mandal and President and Secretary of Amar Seva Mandal Nagpur and uh, Srinivas Varkedi, Vice Chancellor and uh, that is Central Sanskrit University 
and uh, professor martin who addressed us uh, previously from usa at the outset uh, this national knowledge commission also emphasized that uh, all educational institutions must be equipped with uh, ict facilities now this uh, chandrapur law college as is able to conduct an international seminar means that is due to advent of the internet advancement of information technology that is offering to the higher education in this context national knowledge commission also arranged some national knowledge lecture series one of the professor from united states of america has delivered a lecture on rule of law and which was participated on all universities in india so this pandemic has suddenly forced us to transform our offline education into online education so this pandemic has disrupted entire world economy and caused a huge impact on all sectors including the education sector worldwide all the campuses were closed and uh, all campuses in the world has to transform formal offline education to online education when compared to india advanced countries are already embraced with the ict facilities and they are offering offsite courses and people from india can uh, join in one course in harvard university because of the advancement of uh, information technology by using such institutions of higher learning in india all education activities being interrupted due to pandemic policy makers were facing many problems for formulating on a policy related to education system despite all such challenges higher education institutions have managed to ensure continuity and made every possible endeavor to maintain continuity of education among the students if we analyze the impact of covid disruptions covid has disrupted because of corona virus and lockdown uh, if you analyze some of the impacts of covid on our education system it includes student dropouts learning constraints digital classes private institutions so some private institutions were closed there are job losses fewer admissions research and development constraints financial crisis which resulted in lack of understanding and research and learning lack of productivity and low productivity and higher dropout rates are witnessed throughout india it has the sudden closure of the higher education institutions tend to increase pressure on the students teachers and parents especially those with limited digital know how and limited resources and students who are staying in remote areas increases the burden on the parents also to not only facilitate all learning resources but also supervise them to ensure that they are attending online classes regularly in india our problem is not only providing ict facilities to facilitate online education in institutions because the students also while they are studying from home and attending online classes they there are they are having lack of infrastructural infrastructural facilities to actively automatically utilize the online education because lack of connectivity lack of velocity lack of access to ict facilities and lack of know how of parents also to supervise 
whether their kids are uh, really attending the classes then uh, higher education institutions closure due to pandemic has impacted the students debt it has prolonged the education and pg shattered academic calendar and academic dreams of the the only 33% have passed in intermediate education then the students and parents agitated against the government because of this pandemic who are unable to study or how you are penalizing then the government has taken a decision to pass all the students so all the students have passed without attending without some of them even attending the examination due to pressure from the students and parent community so this unlike professor martin country very developed and they embraced ict facilities long back and offering online courses in pg degrees diplomas and etc so in india we are facing these problems and uh, in many educational institutions especially in private educational institutions some of the teachers were uh, lost the jobs and some teachers were paid only half salaries and there um, because of the use of this information technology one faculty member now able to address thousands of students online therefore the management some managements are using these facilities to and cash that by reducing the faculty members because these institutions are purely run on self financing basis that is their problem and many faculty members suffered due to pandemic they lost their jobs they lost their uh, and some were paid only half salaries and uh, these self financing institutions they posted the students also when their attendance is less to pay um, more fees towards condonation so the students as well as faculty suffered like this it may be applicable to some other states in india also then uh, the problems we are facing include teachers are also not computer savvy savvy that means at least some whether all teachers are equipped with modern gadgets and whether all institutions have internet facility with good bandwidth that is the problem so we are and uh, can passing education institutions said issue regarding cost of education based on software and opt for a free online platform which will not hinder on online teaching so many issues related to online classes students attendance some of the complaints were the professors in this respect of the students says students they are just uh, opening as if they join and they don't uh, regularly attend the lecture but uh, due to the software uh, yeah once he joined uh, it appears that he already joined the lecture but uh, out of them uh, very few will attend the classes and the rest of them they are not attending the classes just simply operating their mobiles etc then how to conduct assessments and how to to conduct examination is a, is also a problem with the institutions which are primarily online many institutions in india are running their classes offline so suddenly when we are thrown into this new system of learning online teaching they are facing many problems so it has made a paradigm shift in higher education and challenges and 
so next generation teacher has to computer literate our uh, new education policy to 2020 also it uh, emphasizes that more emphasis should be given to the online education and using of ict facilities and equip the all institutions with internet connectivity and broadband connectivity and these are the issue and uh, uh, to remove compartmental of education which you are following the new education policy insists on introducing uh, credit system and uh, if you studied in other discipline and join this uh, you want to go for other discipline you can discontinue this course and join there again you come back and finish this course and thereby it facilitate the students of credit facility then the government of india started mac mass online courses is an initiative taken by the government of india to encourage online learning it contributed tremendously through the pg patsala with 3200 experts 70 subjects and 723 papers the government of india also launched swayam prabha pre dth channel for education from hrd uh, dth channel for education by ministry of human resource development and it telecasts educational programs throughout the day 24 into 7 and mock massive education courses launched with the concept of three cardinal principles of education policy such as access equity and quality the main agenda is accessible to all learners especially those disadvantaged sectors changing is change is constant phenomena so there is need to change the pedagogy with emergence of information technology educators have to transform to meet the students expectations i may i i may recall one of the harvard university professor saturday commenting because of uh, availability of online literature the students are writing so much on the different subjects and we faculty with limited time available available to evaluate the scripts written by the students so their expectations are much more and when you whatever you there that is in teach uh, text when you teach they are saying uh, we can already read that you should tell us more that developed they have developed out of box thinking so whatever available on the text that is also available on the google also everybody can see that therefore our teaching pedagogy must be has to change with the expectation of the students and in india unfortunately whatever spent on education is 3% of gdp and it is very less when compared to uh, the budget that is spent by developed countries on education the uh, ict facilities are now available the teachers who are teaching online include go to meeting.com skype.com google classroom youtube.com blackboard.com zoom meetings whatsapp cisco webex google hangouts so several types of uh, platforms online platforms are available to transform our offline teaching into online teaching as pointed out by professor glee we are lacking some of the advantages of offline teaching when you don't have direct interaction with the teachers etc i also agree with him on this aspect therefore there is ever need especially in a developing country as india where this ict facilities are not available throughout the length and breadth of the country and all institutions have to equip with these facilities
and simultaneously it imposes a burden on the parents and students to uh, make proper infrastructure to equip to the online teaching and learning and with this i conclude my speech and once again thank you for the organizers having invited me for this international webinar on challenges of higher education due to pandemic paradigm and challenges thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir you are rightly said that there are the tremendous changes has been took place due to the pandemic in the education system also so now the this uh, session is open for the question answers uh, so there are the few questions are there from uh, participant side uh, okay. the first question is uh, do you think uh, that online mode of evaluation on examination are up to the mark uh, than traditional one some students uh, are complaining that uh, assessment of uh, students on online due to examinations are uh, not transparent and uh, they are putting in a digit one digit position and one of the challenges offered in this online teaching and learning is that for conducting examinations and assessments so we face the difficulty that is a genuine grievance sector survey some of the students yes sir the so second question is what is the impact of the online education in rural areas so uh, in most of the uh, management in rural areas they, they are uh, not able to provide the, all the facilities to the student uh, or technical facilities also so what do you think that uh, about it so the other day i had a lecture of shishi tarur he was complaining that uh, many education institutions in india particularly in rural areas they are not having a, um, internet connection so whatever uh, government policies that are formulated from time to time and uh, spending so much budget on education they are unable to deliver because uh, many schools and the colleges they lack connectivity of the internet connection even if connected the brand with is very less so it is dis uh, disrupting the academic atmosphere okay uh one well, last question sir can you suggest any new technique or ways by using student uh, can give their best in uh, that or in that or situation because uh, your students also should become computer savvy savvy because nowadays the students who are coming up in this generation the from right from the schools are they also their computer savvy and uh, they uh, they have to improve the computer knowledge and use of various techniques and use of various platforms so that they can get advantage of not only online teaching from the institutions they are studying but also available on the web they can make use of that okay sir okay sir thank you thank you very much you. i on behalf of the organization uh, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to you sir for gracing this event and also thanks and acknowledge you uh, uh, for unwavering support that is received from you uh your presence has immensely enhanced the importance of this uh, webinar sir so thank you very much uh, now i call upon uh, dr manap madam to conduct further proceeding of the webinar thank you lena ma'am uh, moving ahead in this webinar i dr nandita gaikwad on behalf of govindra bansal college of law and sp college of law welcome next resource person and participants the classroom teaching in a law colleges can never be a substitute for a practical knowledge before making a young lawyer eligible to appear in a court of law can we produce doctors without giving the first hand experience of attending on patient uh, in a hospital no 
same is with the legal profession the study of law within the confined law college keep the young minds restricted to the poll facts in the past they have to brought to the real life issues situations litigations so to have hands on approach and understand as to how the law is practically applied inside the court rooms a lawyer is described as a officer of court a lawyer is a professional specially ordinary to perform at a crisis time of the life of other people and almost daily to make moral judgments of great sensitivity lawyer constitute a noble profession our today's resource person advocate those there is a sir who is described as a officer of a court a lawyer is a professional specially ordained to perform at crisis time of life of other people and almost daily to make moral judgments of a great sensitivity a lawyer constitute a noble profession today our resource person advocate firdaus mirza who is a renowned practicing lawyer in nagpur is the gem of this noble profession sir represents administrative side of standing council for bombay high court sir was senior standing council for maharashtra state but for board and also for central excise and customs department for many years sir was appointed as amicus curiae by bombay high court in the matters like modernization of slaughtering house slaughter house shegao development project and regulation of school buses sir has appeared in a various public interest litigations like kolam starvation death right to education right to food and religious encroachment on roads more than 100 judgments in which sir had appeared were reported in various law journals including maharashtra law journal and other aii journals one more feature of sir is that various articles were published in newspaper in many languages and of course he is a very good speaker when it comes to the field of law sir has also received the national youth award in 1994 from government of india sir i am honored and happy to welcome you to all who are present here thank you dr gaikwad for projecting me what i am not <laughs> today's uh, my co resource person dr a satyanarayana raju principal dr anjali hastak principal dr snehal fadnais dr glen martin dr lina langde dr nandita gaikwad and the galaxy of uh, teachers from the various law colleges who are present here in this international webinar on impact on of ongoing pandemic on higher education new paradigm and challenges i am uh, thankful to the office bearers of sarvodaya shikshan uh, sanstha and amar seva mandal and principals of shantaram purdukhe college of law and guindra vanjari law college nagpur for inviting me in such a important webinar important being it discusses the challenges before higher education that we do discuss seldom at very few moment uh, it is being discussed at general maybe amongst the teachers fraternity it is uh, they have some discussions on it but generally the higher education is the last thing we need to discuss so once again thank you especially hastak madam now 
we are dealing with the higher education in human beings. Now, if we talk about humans, humans are social animals. Now, if you take out the word social from it, what remains? The remains is only animal. The first question that came to my mind after reading the topic, but what is the challenge before the higher education? I said, I need to remold this headline to the challenges faced by the students taking higher education. So the first thing that occurred to their life is they have lost their social activities, socialization, meeting the peers, meeting the teachers in flesh and blood. So they have lost this social out of this social animal and what we made them. So according to me, this is the challenge before our higher education that what we are going to produce after this pandemic, what product we will be getting. Now, I agree, uh, strongly agree with Dr. Satyanarana Raju that yes, there are so many positive things also. At least for me, this online thing has proved to be a boon. Today, I argued two matters in high court and one before the Supreme Court. Was it possible prior to shifting over the virtual mode? No, because high court was at Nagpur and Supreme Court in Delhi. So it was in fact impossible and it became virtually possible. Only. But I was able to do this because I am resourceful. I got two broadband connections in my office very high speed broadband connections. But when I compare this with my junior friends who don't have these facilities with them, who have to connect through their mobile phones, relying on the data the mobile companies are providing them, the speed mobile companies are providing them. So then we realize that we have a digital divide in India. Haves and have-nots. Those who have all the facilities, they are already rich and becoming richer. Those who don't have these facilities, they come from marginalized background and they, they are being pushed to poverty. This is not amongst the professionals. This is happening amongst the students also. This is happening amongst the institutions also. Recently, the Honorable High Court has received a few letters from an adjoining district from Chandrapur, that is Gadchirud. The letters were from few students complaining that they belong to tribal background. They were selected for good schools in the urban area, but due to closure of those schools, they are sent back to their villages. Their schoolmates, their classmates who reside in urban area, they are continuing with their education. But as they are in such area where they don't have connectivity, their families doesn't have smartphones. And if they have smartphones or connectivity, they don't have 24 hours electricity. Then this is violation of their fundamental right guaranteed under Article 21A. That is right to education. High court was pleased to entertain this in larger public interest. And fortunately, I was appointed as a micus in that matter. When I went into depth, then I studied it and found that there is a huge digital divide in India. Huge divide amongst haves and have-nots. And therefore, the entire system has collapsed. Article 21, 21A that deals with a free and compulsory education to each child from 6 to 14. Now, those children 
who are getting education online or who didn't got education at all because they were not able to appear online or access online they would be reaching to higher education are we aware of this challenge that what type of raw material we are going to get how we are going to deal with the issue of loss in the learning techniques in amongst these students the learned teachers present here they need to address this second question if we have to teach them or reach the students online only why would we require such an infrastructure why the bar council of india should not revise the rules regarding availability of the classrooms the sizes of the classrooms the teaching material etc why aict should not change the norms for opening the engineering colleges then the another question would be if online teaching is to be given why we require so many teachers as rightly pointed out by dr raju these are all challenges then i'll go one step ahead if we have to shift on digital platforms why we require human beings why not artificial intelligence when there is no person to person interaction we can do it so once artificial intelligence come there in if a centralized teaching process has started there will be no job market for the net set and phd candidates so there would be loss of livelihood thereby violating the fundamental right guaranteed under article 21 that is right to life we were talking about the digital divide so there comes into play article 46 of the constitution of india in the directive principles it it made a duty of the state to promote with special care the educational and economic interest of the weaker sections of the people so if the state is performing this duty why there is digital divide and if the students are not able to access equally to all the facilities whether the state has performed its duty under article 46 these are further questions that needs to be addressed but i personally feel that the pandemic has hit the higher education so badly that our students for these pandemic years they are lacking in various various professional and practical arenas now as we are discussing on a platform of law college let us discuss about the law students the problems faced by law students now law is not a theoretical subject it is a purely practical subject the lawyers or law students are not dealing with the machines machines behave uniformly but we need to deal with human beings and each human is different so for dealing with human there has to be a practical knowledge of humans to get practical knowledge of humans we need to meet humans we need to study their behavioral pattern but because of online classes they are not able to meet their classmates they are not able to attend the internships because the offices are not permitting them to come the courts have said that please don't bring your juniors or interns to the courts so the lawyers we would be getting or law graduates we would be getting who only know the books or the law written in the books but the application of law the practical application of law how to deal with different type of people they will not be having those knowledge 
they have to undergo the same training again but this time unfortunately out of college the training they are expected to get in college they would have to undertake out of college so problem of these law students how to address it then comes article 41 no 14 15 i am making references to these articles because we are amongst the law teachers article 14 equality article 15 again no discrimination on the basis of your sex race caste and place of birth so here if i am born at nagpur or in metro city by birth i get all these resources if i am born in gadchiroli or some remote area of chandrapur district by birth i have these handicaps isn't it a violation of my fundamental right under article 15 if i am not getting access only because of the place of my birth or residence so these are the challenges we must say there is no alternate to the physical appearance in the colleges physical attendance in the colleges isn't it impacts us psychologically to talk to the screen isn't it bad that we are not getting any responses don't you miss the back benches because the happening in a classroom is always at the back benches and our experience are they are always made a good lawyers so due to lack of response aren't we losing good teachers or making of good teachers because teachers also learn from their students so the challenge we are facing is the making of a good human being so how to address it because we have to live with this pandemic or endemic whatever it will be we are living with it for the last two years don't know some says that it will go for a longer period some say that it uh, ends early we wish and pray that it must end early because at home also i am father of two daughters during pandemic my one daughter became lawyer and another who was studying in delhi university after scoring very good she got admission in delhi university and only for 6 months she was at delhi and now she is in final year studying from nagpur so this these losses i can see their uh, how they are uh, this uh, disillusioned with everything so we have to address their psychological problems also this is creating so this was all what uh, i had to share with you all in my opinion the pandemic has created more questions than the answers the virtual thing has created more divide than they were earlier it has sent us into class division now and it has impact irreversible impact on our next generation so once again thanking the organizers and especially the principals of both the college i take leave of all of you thank you you thank you sir you thank you sir for making us aware about the real challenges faced by, by the student and how uh, various rights are violated uh, and uh, sir now the session is open for uh, questions and answer Uh, and one of the participant had asked the question uh, that though the online education is a need of an art uh, still what about the practical experience of a law students which they gain by visiting various places like courts the lok adalat 
Now look, from today, uh, courts are closed. We are again virtual. For the last two years, Supreme Court is not functioning physically. It is virtual. So where is the training of physical? So it is not there. And uh, whether there is need, we have to go a little bit in history. 100 years back, especially for women or girl students, there was always a home teaching. There were no schools till uh, Mahatma Jyotiba Phule, Mata Savitri Bai and uh, Fatima Sheikh, they have started the school. So there was home teaching. So what was the need of a community teaching and sending them to schools, then colleges? It was because they need to interact with others. They should learn to interact with others. So again, if we are going for home teaching, that means we are pushing our hey, Sanvi, 100 years back. Light so I don't feel that there is a need of any virtual thing. We must shift to physical education, uh, physical presence in educational institutions. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, one last question uh, is that how you analyze a traditional mode of teaching and online mode of teaching? According to me, online mode of teaching is not a teaching. It is just a formality. Because as I said, traditional mode of teaching, there is interaction. In online teaching, the teachers can share their, say, their experiences. Is there real satisfaction of teaching? We can play the recorded versions. What is the need of live person? There? Then the questions, those come. Then some student is trying to put a question. Suddenly his uh, uh, mobile goes away. His connectivity loses. So these are all things that are not expected in a student's life or teacher's life. So according to me, there has to be regular teaching in colleges. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank now, you. now I call Mrs. Vaishali uh, Shivankar to propose vote of thanks. Thank you, Nandita Ma. A graceful and warm good evening to one and all. It's my honor to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on the occasion of one day international webinar on impact of ongoing pandemic. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, very much audible. Uh, okay. Uh, on the occasion of one day international webinar on impact of ongoing pandemic, on higher education, new uh, paradigm and challenges. I, Vaishali Shivankar, on behalf of SP Law College Chandrapur and Govinda Vansari College of Law, Nagpur, to extend my gratitude to our honorable resource person, Advocate Firdos Mirza Sir, to take out time from his busy schedule to grace this event. Sir has rightly explained challenges faced by students during the pandemic, like lack of socialization, lack of physical activity in the colleges and school, network issues, etc. Thank you, sir, for inspiring and encouraging, uh, encouraging us with your kind words of wisdom on this special day. The way, sir, explained the topic was very ex explanatory. Once again, thank you to one and all for gracing the webinar. Thank you. In the valedictory session of one day international webinar on impact of ongoing pandemic on higher education, new paradigm and challenges. Uh, the president of valid appreciation, respected Dr. Kirti Vardhan Dikshit, Joint Secretary, Sarvode Shikshan Mandal Chandrapur, former Vice Chancellor, Gondwana University, Gajaruli, and ex-principal Rajiv Gandhi Engineering College, Chandrapur. The guest of honor, respected Dr. Uh, S.S. Kawe, Pro Vice Chancellor Gondwana University Garchiroli, the Chief Guest, respected Dr. Nuzhat Parvin Khan, Dean Bennett University Noida, and all the honorable guests, teaching staff, and dear students. Myself, Dr. Suvarna Mangrukar welcomes you all. Ladies and gentlemen, today I feel proud that we are blessed with the presence of the eminent personality like respected Dr. Nuzhat Parveen Khan as our chief guest. Professor Dr. Nuzhat Parveen Khan 
is the Dean School of Law, Ballot University, the Times Group, Greater Noeda, and former Dean Faculty of Law, Jamia Milia Islamia, Central University, New Delhi, India. She has authored a number of books on conflicting and contemporary legal issues. Madam has published more than 50 research papers on prestigious referred and peer reviewed journals covering diverse area of law. Madam has contributed and presented modules of geometrics of the UGC e Shala project at graduate and postgraduate level. She has also authored study materials for various universities and colleges across the nation. Madam has delivered lectures extensively as a resource person and keynote speaker in various national, international seminars, conferences, and faculty development programs. She was invited as keynote speaker at the seventh academic international conference on interdisciplinary legal studies at Harvard University, USA in 2017. She has been frequently invited as a resource person on Lok Sabha TV, ZTV, and Doodarshan TV channels. She is also a resource person to various bodies like UPSC and State Public Service Commissions and advisor to various universities and institutions. Under the visionary leadership and mature guidance, the Faculty of Law, Jamia Milia Islamia Delhi, has made great strides in academic research which helped reach Faculty of Law to the sixth best law school of India as per NIRF 2018 rankings. According to India Today magazine, the issue of 26th June 2017, the JMI was in first position. Respected Madam has quality-centric teaching and especially she is trendsetter of a greater leader and academician and one of the best guides. Madam, I request you, to guide us on this occasion, Madam. Thank you so much, Suvarna, for such a grand introduction. I am not, uh, you know, of that is stature. Thank you so much for giving me all that honor. First of all, uh, yes, I was hearing all the speakers, and I also must congratulate you for organizing this one-day international webinar on the topic of impact of ongoing pandemic on higher education. Uh, new paradigms and challenges. Uh, as I know, the or it has been organized in collaboration with Sarvodhya Shiksha Mandal, uh, Shantaram uh, Potduke College of Law, Chandrapur, and Amar Seva Mandal, uh, Govind Rao Vanjari College of Law, Nagpur. So congratulations to both the organization, uh, especially Anjali Ma'am, who has contacted me time and again and uh, in my session today, uh, the president of or president of the session, Dr. Kirti Vardhan Dikshiji, former vice chancellor uh, of uh, Gandavana University. Uh, uh, I also have with me uh, Dr. Uh, Prashant Bukare, honorable vice chancellor, uh, Gondwara University, Garchiroli, and uh, Madam Sneha. And I also want to, you know, give my regards to the previous speakers, especially Professor Srinivasan, sir, who is the Vice Chancellor of Sanskrit University. In fact, his speech, I really like that uh, all happens for the something good. Uh, the, the, the type of things which COVID has given to us are actually somewhere uh, the shift in the new education policy also. So... Uh, somehow, um, you know, when we say uh, there is lots of impact, we know that pandemic has threatened us with losses. Uh, it has educated us and helped us to realize our imaginative and constructive policies and possibilities. But at the same time, uh, we can say that uh, it has a great impact on the education sector. Uh, Though we say that online classes, online classes have become a new normal due to pandemic. Uh, and uh, of course, not only the new education policy, even the UGC for a long was working on, uh, you know, MOOCs, SOM courses and lots of online, you know, learning so that everybody have got the access. But that was a part of the 
whole learning system. But with this COVID uh, absolutely turning the classes to online, sitting in our houses, uh, now the degree will come in the coming, uh, you know, academic semester, which will be a Corona degree. The full degree will come while the students sit at home. So uh, this has all a great impact on the student. And we all are, almost all of us are teachers here. We have seen what type of condition was there uh, in the classrooms. Uh, students were there if they are attending the class. They cameras were switched off, their volumes were switched off. There was no interest uh, even to the teachers because while you're sitting face to face, even if at times the students are indulging to talk, so we are just intervening and asking them something, making them, but that we cannot do in such classes. So the problem was while we have shifted to this new normal, the big, big question was whether such a step would be temporary in nature or they will act as a catalyst for bringing about the desired result in the education system. As you know, I am a professor of law and the previous speaker, uh, uh, advocate uh, Fridos also talked from the legal education perspective. Uh, I, I may also take something, you know, with regard to how the legal education, I mean, higher education in general and legal education in particular have suffered, especially at the end, I heard one question being asked with regard to that in law classroom education is okay, but there is lots of a component of practical learning. Yes, actually, that is the most important part, clinical legal education, clinical courses and clinical courses are not complete without the students going for the internship for the lawyers chambers there is a full slot allotted to them though even the you know this internship was also becoming online but do we understand what will they learn with this online this thing so actually the legal education have suffered a lot even i understand even the medical education so most of the educations uh, uh, have not got that flavor at its used to be the young student the school students we all have you know in one of the other uh, family member having their children studying in their school they have forgotten about how to do the science practical they all are sitting in the house making files but the practical part is missing so uh, you know uh, 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 with regard to law which is a you know social institution and law is basically designed to regulate human relations economic social political so there is a need to evolve when conditions surrounding us have become changing rapidly and legal education uh, basically requires, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is a prerequisite uh, with regard to noble legal profession that not only we, we do give uh, um, some type of consultation, but we at times we are indulged into lots of, uh, you know, uh, community service also, lots of pro bono service also. That was also missing during this part of uh, the whole uh, pandemic. Uh, then, um, uh, uh, legal education have certain standard that have also lost the flavor during COVID-19 period and that is going on and on. We do not know where it is going on to finish. Uh, so the technological challenges uh, uh, which have been realized during uh, COVID uh, and have already have been spoken not only by the law student, but uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, you know, it has been witnessed all across uh, uh, by the uh, uh, students and the faculty members. Some of them were facing the problem of internet. Some of them were facing the problem of connectivity, the gadgets also. In one family, you can have one mobile phone or one laptop, and when everybody have to work with the with the electronic gadget, so th that was not available to every each one of them. Uh, uh, there are various platforms, however, where many lawyers, judges, they are coming up on some topics, they are sharing their experiences, their knowledges for their students, but that is not it. In fact, even the lawyering community, the lawyers, it has been pointed out by the chairperson of the Bar Council of India to the Chief Justice, that there are all category of lawyers, all the people in the legal fraternity do not have access to uh, required uh, technological resources. So there is a, uh, you know, huge or we will say big uh, disparity among the uh, legal fraternity itself with regard to, uh, to become a good lawyer or to become a bad lawyer or to become a poor lawyer or to become a rich lawyer. So there are uh, lots of limitations. 
Uh, then regarding when we say learning, I mean, uh, during the learning, there were lots of limitations. Uh, and there are, of course, there are certain educate uh, advantages also of the online education but what i have noticed personally there were more limitations uh, if we talk of advantages there were many because uh, we say that even the student from the remotest part could connect but initially there were problems that they were not able to connect there were not devices there were not internet and that point it becomes the duty of the state to provide internet also as one of the fundamental right as one of the basic right of the human beings because you cannot access anything without the availability of the internet uh, and then examination uh, a student can attend the class partly they can hear partly they cannot hear but while appearing for the examination whereby they have to upload their answer script there were both sides many of them were not able to many were of them were not able to submit it on time on the other hand teachers issue was that all it is copied there were large amount of literature which the students send in the copy for the teacher also it becomes you know great uh, difficult to to evaluate such uh, answer scripts so it was both ways there were uh, limitations of learning there were advantages of learning there were limitations of uh, not getting connected connected and not being able to be part of it but then uh, as i said initially many of them will be graduate even without attending the classes or even without doing anything so this degree will be a unique degree in the history whereby the student will get a degree without attending the classes. Uh, when we, you know, um, uh, the regarding UGC, I was saying, UGC has emphasized the need and advantages of online education, and the same should be applied as far as the legal education is concerned. But uh, uh, there are challenges which are also required to be seen by all the premier organizations, be it UGC, be it Bar Council of India, because there are uh, differences. If we think of some premier law colleges who have infrastructure to sustain these challenges, which have been posed by the pandemic, some other law schools which have lack of infrastructure, they have been lagged behind, then their classroom teaching, which have been accompanied by activities uh, that cannot be completed without some you know practical component that have been absolutely missing the student were not able to go to the lawyer chambers they have not seen the trials practically so that is very significant especially you know to the final year law students and in fact all through the law course that is very important so uh, um, we see that many of the you know views that online platform cannot be i don't think it can be viewed as the future of at least of the legal education in india uh, there can be introduction of some online mechanism in legal education that is the need of the hour in fact um, uh, every one of us must be knowing that even ugc has emphasized 60 40 that 60 percent classroom teaching i mean even if it is normal time 60 40 and 40 percent uh, you know learning will come through some online modes through MOOCs courses through um, swim courses and through some other mediums of online but absolute online platform i don't understand that is the future of any education uh, then uh, regarding, you know, response from, from many legal institutions during COVID that whether they were able to cope up with it or they were not able to cope with the COVID situ situation, uh, most of them actually suffered. Most of them, uh, they, 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 they say that they have tried with many free online tools, but they could not do anything because of at time lack of resources, at time lack of connectivity. So the pandemic has brought us, uh, you know, uh, I will say to a surface to the dire need to revamp the institution in the uniform manner. Uh, uh, if, if it goes on, it, if it is uh, the continuous process, the student have to learn, or even if it goes as per UGC 6040, it is the, uh, you know, need of the time that there should be some type of, uh, you know, uniformity of the accessibility 
or to the uh, educational institution uh, so that each institution is able to impart in a uniform manner. And that becomes the duty of, of course, the state. It has become the, apart from, you know, uh, it was always the duty of the state with regard to education. We have Article 21A of the Constitution, which talks about education as one of the fundamental rights. But never before such need arose as it is today, the state interference with regard to see that each institution is equipped to deal with the situation. It becomes, you know, regarding the admission test, if we talk of one of the very important uh, test for the uh, law school's admission, we call it CLAT, Common Law Admission Test, which is conducted by national universities. Uh, though there were, uh, you know, lots of uh, uh, examination centers or examination was conducted online, but it's still, the flavor was not that and it could have been at, with regard to when it happens under certain centers. Uh, regarding, you know, uh, this new era of legal, legal education, we know that legal education is undergoing transition. Uh, it will be uh, sometime, uh, you know, uh, even if, uh, if it is a normal scenario and uh, legal education is acquiring new, uh, you know, phases, new transition, we all believing that there should be more accessibility, more data driven, more result oriented, and it should be transparent. But uh, the learning centers for life are the universities. They are, you know, they are for skilling throughout the career of the student. While a student in the campus, they not only go to the classroom, they are having the total exposure of their society, their peers, their, you know, they, they don't learn everything in the classroom. They learn a lot more outside the classroom while they are sitting in the coffee shop, in the canteen with their peers, sitting in the corridors. So they, they, they talk to each other. They learn their skilling is complete with regard to their career, their internship, their future course, their, you know, uh, other uh, facets of their life. It is not complete only even if we say that uh, we'll make it more, uh, you know, uh, technology friendly or the state intervention will provide more resources. But uh, unless they are, uh, they, 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 there is a, you know, normal scenario, their education flavor is not complete. Uh, when we talk of some, you know, pedagogical methodologies, we are, you know, providing to the students with different type of methodologies. There are PowerPoint presentations. There are the YouTube videos which are being uploaded for the students. Uh, you know, there is flexibility, agility. Uh, there are some type of other competencies which are essential in the digital age. So that they are learning, but practical and interpersonal skills, cultural awareness and doctrinal knowledge is always an important and integral part of the, you know, uh, students learning. They will acquire a more global perspective only when the student and faculty uh, will be, you know, um, uh, uh, not be constrained because of the physical presence. In the sense, for their holistic development, the physical presence of the teacher along with the student is one of the mandatory thing of good education. Uh, legal, unlike, like other educations, legal education can be, you know, uh, further technological in, in technologically enabled because we are thinking of we 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 are looking at the present scenario. We never know till when we have to go by it. So for that, uh, you know, the new processes are required, which are in which are to enable the faculty to provide the students some type of individualized learning approach where the students from the you know diversity their performance their behavior their career objectives if everything is taken into consideration again uh, uh, we all the teachers know that there are different type of student in a class so sometimes they need a different approach from the teacher so how a teacher will in such a scenario will be talk to those students will be with those students that's a very difficult scenario uh, which always require the physical, you know, uh, presence of each other so that their issues can be taken up. Uh, uh, I don't know when it will be post-pandemic. Uh, 
Uh, but, for, you know, in this whole process of learning, I understand that if there will be anything which will be called as post-pandemic legal education, they will they will offer certain, you know, alternatives to the traditional law school in the post-pandemic era. For example, we can think of flipped classrooms, micro-credential enhancing, personalized adaptive learning, or, you know, utilizing interactive digital platforms. Uh, so the restructuring of legal education would mean that it would be affordable and more result oriented, which may be tomorrow required. Uh, and it may be beneficial also, like, for example, I said flipped classroom, whereby it will not be only one side where the teacher is a leader and coming to the class and whatever is saying will be taken up rather than the topics will be floated to the student. They will also go into the research, read it and then. Uh, sometime they will also, you know, uh, 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 participate in the class coming up with their research. And then, so the restructuring of legal education is something which is required. They have, uh, students also have many options. They have numerous options. They still prefer, uh, I mean, it, despite all this, I, I, in between there was, I don't know about Maharashtra, uh, uh, but uh, with regard to Delhi uh, uh, and Uttar Pradesh, there were, a, you know, certain period students were given an opportunity that the campuses will be open and they are, if they want, they can come. There will be a hybrid mode of teaching, both online, offline. So I have never seen the students so much of in haste and eager to come back to the campus and to be in the classes. So they 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 still prefer that there should be traditional classroom oriented law school experience. However, there can be you know uh, uh, flexibility in the teaching if possible, because at times it can be a lower cost, flexible or it can be online or hybrid program, which are better suited for their career path, lifestyle learning preferences, and sometimes the budget is also material. The, you know, this experience have been researched in the United States of America. I'll just give you an example of, uh, you know, a Minerva new model, which is called as, and it was actually uh, reported in New York Times, how to go college during a pandemic. And to this, uh, one of the universities in San Francisco highlighted that the students who were residing in different parts of the world, somebody, some people in San Francisco, in Berlin, Germany, in London, and in other international cities, where the student spend, you know, um, six month by rotation and inhabit in common residence of each location and all coursework is conducted online. But they were, you know, experiencing the change of place through uh, and this this coursework was conducted online by a proprietary platform which was developed by a renowned Harvard psychologist uh, uh, you know which was called as Minerva's new model so this model also worked but for us these type of things are much much far away basically we need that there should be uh, you know some type of uh, regulatory authorities and concerned stakeholders to move forward for the integration of technology and uh, of course restructuring of the legal education which requires a change. The large graduate across uh, you know the country across the institution they are required to be trained in a manner that they will be able to face the challenges of the international level and train themselves to provide transnational uh, legal services. The method of delivery uh, to the, uh, I mean, to the classroom of the lectures should also be collaborative, cooperative and teamwork so that the competitive, passive and it should not be individualistic. Uh, for that, as I said, uh, you know, previously, there can be flipped classroom that the classroom should be made a little more interesting, because in the present time we were seeing it was so much one sided, not from the teacher side only, even the student, we never know whether they are hearing you, whether they are taking your class, we all face that. So now we have to deal with this challenge, how to come up with the more new suggestions so that we can make it more active, more proactive, more collaborative rather than making it a passive or individualistic classroom. 
we can at the law institutions especially or maybe other high school institutions higher educational institution we can incorporate a course on uh, you know some use of computers and internet and other devices in relation to the profession and education of law even the judiciary while the students those who are completing they go they have to uh, attend online they have to get lots of things online some of them are equipped some of them are not equipped some of them are uh, you know they have edu been educated in colleges at a time when there was not technology uh, the lawyers who are in the present time in the prep field so they do not know all this technology know how to connect so for all this it is required that there should be some type of you know uh, we say refresher courses so to the lawyers especially those who are in the uh, 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 who have studied in the previous decades it is required that they should be equipped with this knowledge of the uh, connectivity computers internet and other devices so that they can also take the benefit of their profession also in addition to the existing traditional curriculum we have a need for the courses on an information that may benefit the student when they step into the industry especially uh in these times when every industry is changing and they have evolved to fit in the current needs so they 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 need to be you know industry oriented now also in addition to the classroom teaching the process of implementing the uh flipped learning pedagogy must be started everywhere and this can be of course accomplished through the uh you know ict that is information and communication technology tools uh as well as you know all these massive open online courses moocs which are now there in legal discipline so they are required to be more and more to be floated this will help the student or in improving their professional capacities and capabilities uh, of uh, you know uh, uh, of the law teachers also if the law teachers are also involved in uh, all these technological classroom uh, uh, development also many of the teachers i have noticed especially the university in which right now i am there are teachers who are very smart in fact i found i learned from them there are teachers who are you know doing some new innovative method when they told me initially i said what is this he said i am creating my own youtube videos and before i start my class i am just leaving this one video to be watched by the student and uh, then we start discussion so i you know understand that whatever uh, i want to say or whatever topic i am going on to take the students are showing interest and because visualizing uh, captures the student or everybody's you know uh, view and um, we all by while we viewing uh, makes us gives us more information so uh, in fact visualization is having more impact as compared to uh, only speaking or only reading something so visualizing some pictures some scenarios some cartoons or some film with regard to the topic uh, was giving more interest to the student so i said then what are you doing in the class if you are just showing them this video he said no ma'am we are doing all the discussion on that but later i learned yes this is a method actually because when i got the student feedback i came to know yes his case classes are very interesting his students are giving a very good feedback of the teacher and the teacher being liked and that pedagogy then methodology is being liked by the student so this is it this is something which have been created or which have been you know have become a learning because of uh, some uh, uh, compulsive necessity because necessity makes you to learn so many things so this was some of the creation which nowadays now even uh, you know it it is coming up that these type of things should be adopted and the student should be made to learn through these methods now once again uh, talking about uh, law of schools clinical legal education so uh, here again we apart from saying and uh, declining that yes student have not learned because they cannot go to the law chambers they cannot go practically to the field to they cannot see to the court but here again uh, the, there are clinical legal education classes which are being you know practical internship of the subject it is being done imparted through the experienced lawyers who have been hired by the many universities for hosting interactive 
you know, webinars in the SPAL group of students. Uh, and of course, the teacher, they can assess them through practical sessions on the same with the help of those practical liars. Then the service of uh, alumni can also be used in this regard because the seniors who have studied in the normal times who are in the practice, they can also help the present day students who are not able to, you know, go for their uh, internships through the clinical courses to the court of law, to, to the lawyers chambers. So there are two ways. One, I suggested that there can be experienced lawyer who can be hired. Secondly, their own seniors can be their mentors. Then teaching, uh, you know, techniques uh, can be uh, combining Google Classrooms and Microsoft Teams and many more platforms, which we all know they should be capped because it provides platform for fully utilizing ICT technologies while the teachers are delivering in the classroom. Uh, then regarding a student internship, they will be, you know, uh, the, the, the law colleges, the universities, they will aid the student in comprehending the future market and learning abilities that will aid them in the selecting process later on. So conducting some professional development program can also be an excellent way to give a student the real world experience. It is also necessary that in these uncertain times, you know, institutions must provide guidance to the student throughout the process. It is not the course, the learning, but the student really, you know, in this time, they need more mentoring as they ever, ever requiring from their teachers, uh, because that was being helped um, uh, while they're in the campus. Generally, they can talk to their teacher and learn much more, which is not happening. We all know that uh, while we used to leave the class at the end of the class, there used to be few, few group of students or two, two, three students who always used to chase you up to your chamber, come sit with you or standing and talking on certain things. So that was something very important, actually which was the real learning experience which they go used to go and share with their other students and, and that was the thing out of the classroom which was expanding their practical learning which was expanding their personality development so the student can also you know they can expand their expertise by taking uh, some other online classes practicing interviews and by using various other resources connecting with the law mentors and also help grow its significance in the you know, long run. They use students need to demonstrate that they can work with multiple softwares and flexibility and show their digital experience uh, and expertise to contribute to the existing technology. So, uh, I mean, uh, what I'm trying to say that an aptitude for technology is definitely going on to be the greatest aid to the law student I, while they want to succeed in their legal career uh, in this, you know, digital world. Uh, then there is a need to adapt pedagogical, uh, you know, of teaching law to incorporate uh, information technology and professional training program. They should be established to prepare uh, law student to deal with, uh, you know, e-courts and get familiar with the e-filing procedure. Uh, this, this is required on the part of the law school that we, while we are teaching the pro uh, procedural laws, uh, though at, at anywhere as such in the syllabi, this may not be reflected that how to go to the e-courts or how to do the e-filing. But as a teacher, it's our duty now to, to somehow give that knowledge also to the students because this is becoming mandatory. Then uh, a few impact of COVID-19 on the education across countries. Uh, we don't know whether it would be permanent in nature and the uh, uh, imperative challenges would overcome through certain initiative and reforms. But it is our duty that, that the new era has the potential to bring about the brighter day for the students, for the legal professionals and those in need of legal services and the society. So this is all, uh, you know, the duty of the law schools to 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 uh, to bring, uh, uh, you know, to to uh, make our students who are able to face the challenges for the future, which we do not know what is the future of any education or what is the future of life. So with these words, I think I am ending, and there may be certain things I'll take through questions. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Actually, thank you is the very small word. 
to what you have done for humanity. It is the great honor and privilege. No, ma'am. Actually, of <laughs> yeah, we the teachers keep on going and speaking and speaking. So I was just thinking I'm going too much because there is a, I mean, there is no end to it. <laughs> okay, ma'am. Actually, uh, really, it is uh, the great honor and privilege to propose vote of thanks for respected Dr. Nuzat Par uh, Parveen Khan on this memorable occasion. Um, Madam, I know you have been having so much busy schedule, but you have found time to grace this occasion. Ma'am, on behalf of Shantaram Purdukhe College of Law Chandrapur and Govindra Vanjari Law College Nagpur, I really thank you from bottom of my heart. You are each and every word will really be proved as guiding principle to all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I request Dr. Ashwini Balki, ma'am, to read a report of this webinar. Of this webinar. Dr. Ashwini Balki, ma'am, over, over to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Suvarna. Most respected <laughs> dignitaries, President of this valedictory session, Dr. Kirti Vardhan Dixit, former VC, Gonwana University, and Joint Secretary, SS Mandal Chandrapur, Chief Guest, respected Dr. Nuzat Parvin Khan, Dean Bennett University, Noida, Honorable SS Kavesar, Pro Vice Chancellor, Gonwana University, Garchiroli, Dr. Anjali Hasak, ma'am, Principal, Shantaram Kordukhe College of Law Chandrapur and former Dean Law Faculty RTM Nagpur University Nagpur. Dr. Snehal Fadnavich, Principal Govindra Vanjari College of Law Nagpur and member Board of Studies Law Faculty RTM Nagpur University Nagpur. All the learned professional experts, my dear professional comrades and dear students, good evening to one and all. It's my great pleasure and privilege to present the report of one day international webinar on impact of ongoing pandemic on higher education, new paradigm and challenges. Dear colleagues, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic is multifaceted and is clearly manifested in almost all sectors, including education, leading to the near total closure of schools, colleges, and universities. It has dramatically reshaped the way global education is delivered. It had to rapidly shift from traditional classroom teaching to online education. In order to assess the impact of this sudden change on educational ecosystem, Shantaram Portukhe College of Law Chandrapur and Govindra Vanjari College of Law Nagpur have organized this webinar to bring the academicians under one wide umbrella to discuss and deliberate various issues emerging in this context. For this conference, we have received in all 133 registrations from different participants as well as 53 research articles which are going to be published in peer-reviewed, referred and UGC listed journal Ajanta with impact factor 6.399. The inaugural session started with the introductory speech of Dr. Anjali Hastak Principal Shantaram Kurdukhe College of Law Chandrapur and former Dean Law Faculty RTM Nagpur University. She welcomed chief guests, dignitaries, invited speakers, and all the learned delegates from different parts of India. In his inaugural speech, Honorable Professor Srinivas Varkhedi discussed the contribution of COVID-19 pandemic in reconstructing the new education system, as well as pros and cons of online education. Respected Dr. Glenn Martin, President, World Constitution and Parliament Association, New York, USA, in his keynote address, highlighted the impact of COVID disaster on teacher-student relations. Dr. Smita Vanjari, 
ट्रेजरर अमर सेवा मंडल नागपुर एंड सीनेट मेंबर आरटीएम नागपुर यूनिवर्सिटी नागपुर इन हर प्रेसिडेंशियल स्पीच हैज फोकस्ड ऑन रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ एजुकेशनल सिस्टम टू द चैलेंजेस रेस्ड बाय दिस ऑनलाइन ऑन गोइंग पैंडेमिक coming to the technical session it was graced by the prominent resource persons dr a satyanarayan raju former professor of commercial law school of law dyer dawa university federal democratic republic of ethiopia and advocate firdos mirza from bombay high court nagpur dr raju analyzed the sufferings of students parents and faculties due to sudden shift to ict education advocate firdos mirza said that this educational system is badly hit by a pandemic he has also highlighted on the various constitutional rights which are violated due to this sudden shift <coughs> the parliamentary <coughs> function is chaired by respected dr kirti vardhan dikshit sir former vice chancellor gondwana university garchiroli and joint secretary ss mandal chief guest respected dr nuzhat parvin khan said that law is an instrument of social change and absolute online platform is inadequate to comply the needs of legal education in all this international webinar webinar proved to be a big success with lot of deliberations and question answers thank you thank you for giving me this opportunity now i would like to request dr nandita nair to conduct the further proceedings thank you thank you once again to dignitaries of today's webinar faculty members and all the participants of our webinar a wonderful good evening to one and all myself nandita vinayak the coordinator of pg department sp college of law chandrapur i feel extremely privileged and honored to give an introduction on pro vc of gondwana university so dr yes s sri ram kauri so actually dr prashant sir was invited but due to some busy schedule he can't join our webinar but we are extremely glad with your presence dr ss kauri sir i would like to give a brief introduction now kauri sir is the pro vc of gondwana university and the experience journey of ss kauri sir has started as a lecturer and associate professor of adarsh arts and commerce college of wadisa district garchiroli then principal in professor grade in college sri govind prabhu arts and commerce in balarpur district and dean of the faculty of humanities in our gondwana university and presently as the pro vice chancellor of our gondwana university again so has published so many books he has authored and provided to the society his contribution through so many books and also research papers are also published by sir moreover ss kauri sir is a member of other bodies of the university more than 25 bodies of the university then he also involved in the formulation of academic programs like in microeconomics macroeconomics indian economics etc and sir has also 
attended and made many conferences very impactful with his gracious presence also with this i would like to invite ss kauri sir to our webinar now so please thank you chief guest of the validatory function honorable dr kirtivardhan dikshit sir dr nihaj khan madam principal of the both organizing colleges dr anjali hastak and dr snail fadanvis eminent speaker academician faculty members and all participant a very good evening to each and everyone for you first of all thank you for inviting me for the validatory function i would like to congratulate principals and teaching and non teaching staff for successfully organizing the conference that one that to own the relevant subject in higher education since it outbreak in late december 19 covid 19 has were khoya across the world and like any critical sector education has been hit hard students schools colleges and university have been deeply impacted according to the united nation educational scientific and culture organization over 800 million learners from around the world have been affected one in five learners can not attend school one in four cannot attend higher education classes and over 102 countries have ordered nation wide school closure while 11 have implemented localized school closure it's through time and we need to overcome from all these i want to congratulate academicians who are working hard during this pandemic and continue teaching and learning activities although there are many challenges i will not take your much time and wish you all healthy life thank you thank you so much much so i extend our sincere thanks and gratitude on behalf of sp college of law chandrapur and gw college of nagpur so your prestigious and impactful advice for us has cherished and motivated us you have inspired us also in this pandemic and the pitiful situation that ongoing and so thank you once more for your glorified presence in our one day webinar thank you so much sir now i call upon professor archana suke for further proceedings good evening to one and all now it's time for presidential address i dr archana suke feel honored to take an opportunity to introduce president of this valedictory session dr kirti vardhan dikshit sir i welcome you sir on behalf of sp law college chandrapur and govindra vanjari college of law not let me introduce dr kirti dikshit sir has completed his doctorate in engineering field sir is a hard academician who believes in powerful learning which tra transforms the students into practically skilled engineers as a educationalist sir has endeavored to publish books and research articles in various national international journals he is optimist who believes in close connectivity among students teachers and staff sir was former principal of rajiv gandhi college of engineering research and technology sir was former vc of gondwana university gadchiroli presently sir hold post as a joint secretary in 
सर्वोदय शिक्षण मंडळ चंद्रपूर नाव आय रिक्वेस्ट सर टू ऍड्रेस हिज प्रेसिडेन्शियल स्पीच थँक्यू मॅडम गुड गुड इव्हनिंग एव्हरी वन प्रेझेंट फॉर दिस व्हॅलिडेटिव्ह फंक्शन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आय वुड लाईक टू कॉंग्रॅच्युलेट द एस पी कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ चंद्रपूर अँड बंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ नागपूर फॉर जॉईंटली ऑर्गनायझिंग ए वेबनॉर ऑन अ व्हेरी रिलेव्हंट टॉपिक द इम्पॅक्ट ऑफ द कोविड ऑन पॅन्डेमिक ऑन द हायर एज्युकेशन ॲज वी ऑल सी and we will not deny that the higher education is suffered but on the if we see some positive sides of all ki i have attended in last 6 months nearly 20 seminars and webinars national and international seminars which is only possible ki because of pandemic we are insisting and focus on the organizing the online conferences which has become very common now while if two years ago if you are thinking to organize an online program nobody can have a dream of it so the the concept of the world is a global village it become true because of this pandemic impact if we have every college is insisting to organize the various seminars on the relevant topics and the students and the faculties are really fortunate to have the views of the international speakers in a limited time and it is very easy for us to organize this type of webinars so whatever the proceedings which are going on since morning are definitely the eye openers and i feel the deliberations which are takes place during the day will definitely give impetus on what are the effects of the pandemic and how to overcome it that is what for this the seminars are organized we i request the organizers to come out with a white paper on the proceedings of the day and it should be forwarded to the relevant authorities to have a thought over it and the purpose with which this particular seminar has been organized should be fulfilled the guest of honor for today's function my friend dr shriram kawale the pro vice chancellor of gonwana university i must admit here that in the pandemic the gondwana university has a time to come out with the flying colors it is the only university in maharashtra which is having very easily they have conducted the online examination which the established university was not in a position to do so so efficiently so i would like to congratulate gondwana university for making use of this pandemic situation to show the strength of the gondwana everyone are as of the opinion that the gondwana is lagging behind but my point of contention is that the gondwana is a boon to the students of chandrapur and garchiroli if it is rightly explored and i hope the new vc has recently joined dr varkhedi sir has given us a line where we can flourish and dr bokale dr shriram kaule and i am really fortunate ki from last 5 years i am the management council member of the university and has the privilege to work under work with the all vcs so definitely this gondwana university will come out with the flying colors and collectively we must see that the pandemic may have its impact but we have to see how it can be utilized for strengthening the higher education so i am thankful from my bottom of heart to all the organizer particularly dr anjali hastak madam principal manjari college madam for organizing this particular seminar and inviting me to this function and sharing my views with the all the participant and thankful to all the participant who makes it a point to join and make a program a success so once again i thank each and every one present for this uh, webinar and with these few words i conclude here thank you thank you very much sir for sharing your experiences and knowledge with us on the impact of online education on uh, rural areas also now i will call upon dr snehal fadnavis to propose vote of thanks but before a brief introduction of dr snehal fadnavis
Presently, ma'am holds a post as a principal in Govindra Vanzari College. Ma'am has done specialization in international law and her PhD thesis is on rights of women refugee in India. Under her guidance, 11 students have been awarded PhD. Ma'am is a member of Board of Studies, RTMNU, Nagpur University. Ma'am has published books and research articles in national and international journals. Now I request Principal Ma'am to propose formal vote of thanks. Over to you, Ma'am. Thank you, Arshina. Good evening, one and all. This is perhaps the last lecture of this uh, evening. Uh, at the outset, I pay my rich uh, tribute to the founders and the great educationist, late Sri Shantaramji Puddukhe, sir, and uh, late Sri Govindraoji Vanjaji, sir, uh, the founder, president of Amar Seva, uh, uh, Sarvode Shikshan Mandar and uh, Amar Seva Mandar, respectively. Uh, thank you is uh, such a small phrase that uh, cannot be seen or touched. It has to be felt uh, uh, by heart, and therefore I uh, I am very uh, I feel very honored and privileged uh, to <clears throat> take this opportunity to thank each uh, one of you who wholeheartedly worked for uh, making this conference a grand success. Uh, I am grateful to the our pa patrons. Mrs. Sudhate Podduke, Mr. Prashant Podduke of SS Mandal, and Dr. Suhasini Vanjari, Madam, and Honorable MLC Advocate Abhijit Vanjari, Sir, for their constant support and encouragement. I thank Dr. Glenn, Dr. Varkhedi, Sir, and Dr. Smita Vanjari, Madam, for gracing the inaugural function. By uh, taking time out of their busy schedules and uh, enlightening us with their uh, valuable uh, insights, I uh, pay my deep sense of gratitude to the today's resource persons, Doctor uh, A. Satyanarayan Raju, sir, and uh, Advocate Firdos Mirza, uh, sir. They are also very uh, busy, uh, but now uh, uh, they. Uh, Made, uh, made it convenient to be uh, here amongst us and uh, they have uh, delivered well-researched uh, speeches and uh, also gave valuable suggestions over this uh, pandemic situation. Uh, I am very much thankful to the Honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, Gondwana University, Honorable Dr. Prashant Bokari, sir, though uh, he's, uh, not, uh, he has not uh, able to come uh, over here. But uh, we had amongst us Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. S. S. Kawai, sir, and um, of course the former VC of Gondwana University, Dr. Kirtivardhan Dikshit, sir, who has graced uh, this um, valedictory function with his graceful presence, and uh, the uh, esteemed Chief Guest Nuzat Parvin Khan, who have graced the valedictory function with uh, uh, her auspicious presence also, and blessed us with uh, the, their valuable insights. Uh, organizing or uh, an international uh, seminar in uh, uh, today's ongoing pan pandemic is uh, not uh, not an easy job. So many uh, people work day and uh, night for uh, shaping this uh, uh, conference in the present form. My words are not enough to thank each one of uh, these people, uh, but to convey uh, some special thanks to some special people, uh, I convey my deep regards to Dr. Sutpinder Singh Dari, Director of Symbiosis uh, Law School, Nagpur, and uh, my dear friend, Dr. Usho Shibuha, uh, for um, helping us in many ways. Uh, an event of uh, uh, this uh, dimension cannot uh, happen overnight. The wheels uh, start rolling months in advance. We uh, principals uh, of uh, both uh, colleges have been uh, very uh, fortunate. Have been fortunate enough to uh, to be backed by a team of very motivated and uh, uh, dedicated colleagues. And uh, I must uh, thank uh, them uh, all, uh, Dr. I.J. Rao sir and Dr. Um, Ajaz Sheikh, who helped. Uh, sitting on the backstage, they helped uh, uh, in lot many things. Then Dr. Pankaj Kakre, Dr. Kar, 
डॉक्टर अभय डॉक्टर मार्गवी डोंगरे डॉक्टर सुवर्णा नंदिता नायर डॉक्टर अश्विनी अँड मनीष डॉक्टर मनीषा अँड प्रोफेसर सुबोध मेश्राम ऑल ऑफ देम वर्क डे अँड नाईट फॉर मेकिंग धिस इव्हेंट अ व्हेरी सक्सेसफुल वन माय आय एम ऑल्सो थँकफुल टू माय डिअर कलिग्स हिअर ॲट गोविंद राव वंजारी कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ डॉक्टर लीना लंगडे डॉक्टर अर्चना सुके डॉक्टर नंदिता मिसेस वैशाली डॉक्टर रोहिणी मिसेस प्रियांका साडा मिसेस विशाखा अँड मिसेस अरुणा राऊत अँड मिसेस पुष्पा फॉर डब्ल्यू सी एल फॉर देअर होल हार्टेड इन्वॉल्वमेंट इन द ऑर्गनायझेशन ऑफ दिस वेबिनार Uh, my extremely sincere thanks are due for mr ajay kushwa and esteemed alumnus of uh, sp college for his uh, uh, technical support uh, we cannot imagine the success of any uh, international national or international webinar without technical support which is the backbone of any uh, online event and hence mr ajay deserves special thanks uh, uh, for uh, this Nonetheless I thank Mr Pradeep and uh, Rohit for extending technical support at this end that is at GWCL. Uh, last but not the least I am thankful to all the uh, honorable delegates uh, who uh, blessed us with their graceful presence they have joined through uh, YouTube and uh, they um, participated actively by uh, posing their questions in this uh, um, in this webinar. At the end I would like to take this opportunity to to thank my counterpart and my dear friend dr anjali uh, who joined hands to organize uh, this dream webinar and uh, worked hard days in and days out for this uh, for the success of uh, uh, the webinar since the day we have decided to have an international webinar uh, as a joint venture uh, and uh, actually uh, we are at the end of this webinar it has become a grand success so many things we have shared so many things uh, we have discussed and uh, uh, i think the outcome of the uh, webinar is uh, if uh, i would like to say in one line is that there is no alternative to the physical uh, presence of uh, students and teachers at the college but then we have to uh, take uh, uh, ways and means out of this that we are all already taking but then we are facing the problems and challenges also and uh, this uh, the insights uh, we took from this uh, uh, webinar that will really help in uh, further uh, organizing the events or in further uh, uh, taking this uh, uh, education system ahead Uh, in this pandemic period though uh, since we do not know that when uh, when and where it is going to end so uh, thanks uh, thank you one and all thanks everyone uh, i i thank everyone on behalf of both the college we are very very thankful and grateful to each one who has joined and uh, who has participated in this uh, national webinar thank you all thank, thank you very much uh, uh, dr snehal uh thank you dikshit sir uh, for uh, actually uh, coming over here and uh, giving us your valuable suggestions uh, now i think let us all raise for national anthem शिशमा गे गाहे तव जय गा